However, could issues arise this year? With 2024 now in the championship, Southampton's max three-year losses are now reduced to 83 million. Factoring in 2022 and 2023's heavy loss, that means the Saints can only afford to lose 5 million in 2024 without breaching PSR rules. Uh, still, I'm a little bit in shock. While still battling in the playoffs to secure their place back to the Premier League, let's uncover the financial story of Southampton. Flashback to 2014, and the Saints delivered a series of top-half finishes as well as European football. However, performances began to wane on the pitch and, despite a takeover by Sport Republic in 2022, Southampton suffered relegation to the Championship a year later. In the dugout, St. Mary saw a steady turnover of managers over the decade. Pochettino, Koeman, Puel, Pellegrino, Hughes, Davis, Hazenhutl, Jones, Sellers. Now let's turn our attention off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Revenues made a significant jump in 2017 following the new TV deal and top half finishes. But after that, the pattern is gradual decline. 2023 delivered 145 and a half million in revenue, almost 40 million down from that 2017 high. What drove this? Let's dig into the revenue streams. First up, broadcasting revenues. Southampton generated 108 million. Compared to 2017, that's down 35 million, a combination of finishing 12 places lower and an absence of Europa League football. Next, match day revenues. The Saints pulled in 19 million. Underlying attendances have remained strong, with over 30,000 for the first time since the pandemic. But commercial revenues have continued to decline. The 15.6 million delivered in 2023, their lowest for five years. But by league position, we can see that the Europa League season is the outlier. And on average, Southampton delivered 141 million over this 10 year spell in the Prem. Uh, we have to stand up again and uh, show a different face. Now let's dive into profits. It's a tale of two halves for the bottom line. Healthy profits were made until 2018, but then the script flips into the red. Southampton's relegation season culminated in a 71 million loss. By league position, we do see improved profits in Southampton's higher place finishes, but much greater volatility in recent years. So what is going on? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Beginning with steady increases until 2017, Southampton's staff costs actually remain largely flat for the next five years but 2023 saw an 8% increase to 123 million. As a proportion of revenues, this did see 2023 increase to 84%, slightly more constrained than the 62% ratio in 2017. But how did this translate into points on the pitch? Southampton's top half finishes came at 1.3 million in wages per point. However, this price soared in the relegation year, Southampton's 25 points costing 5 million each in staff costs. But after accounting for just wages, the Saints look in good shape. Next up, operating costs. These again steadily increased until 2017, then stabilised, though 2023 saw a 26% increase to 45 million. This appears to be driven by 14.6 million costs arising from managerial turnover in the dugout. The costs are both settled with other clubs to bring managers in, and the managers themselves once terminated. At EBITDA level, Southampton's decade begins to split into two halves. Third, stadium and facilities. These have slowly increased over time, reaching 4.4 million in 2023. Which leads us to transfer fees. Southampton consistently delivered net transfer profits in the first part of this decade, with 32 million coming in 2018, fueled by the sale of Virgil van Dijk to Liverpool. However, from 2019, this flipped to significant transfer costs, the club investing heavily in a number of players such as Guido Carrillo, Yannick Vestergaard and Danny Ings. 
This transfer fee profile drives Southampton from profits in the early years to losses more recently. It, it needs a little bit of know-how, it needs to, to learn quickly. But what about financial fair play? Let's deal with Premier League profit and sustainability rules, where teams' PSR losses cannot exceed 105 million over three years. First, we must include Southampton's significant interest costs to get to profit before tax. The Saints are then allowed to exclude certain expenses, such as youth development and women's football. Also in 2021, Southampton are allowed to make an estimate for loss of income through COVID, although we do have to factor in 2020's losses impact there as well. To be clear, these aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates, so feel free to robustly challenge these in the comments. We're assuming 12 million a year in allowable expenses, and that all relevant COVID items net out to zero. Add those back in and we arrive at our PSR loss. Over the three years, Southampton are estimated to have lost 89 million. So the Saints look safe for this period. However, could issues arise this year? With 2024 now in the championship, Southampton's max three-year losses are now reduced to 83 million. Factoring in 2022 and 2023's heavy loss, that means the Saints can only afford to lose 4.5 million in 2024 without breaching PSR rules. Uh, still, I'm a little bit in shock. So how do Southampton get over the line based on what we know so far? Life in the championship means a significant reduction in broadcasting revenues. Comparing to Burnley and Norwich the season before, that could be as much as a 60 million drop in revenue. However, relegation clauses in contracts will mean the wage bill will decrease following their drop. Let's be cautious and say that takes 30 million off the cost base. In terms of new players coming in, Shea Charles and Ross Stewart were the two biggest buys. Their transfer fee costs could add an extra 7 million in the year. But what about players sold? The Saints cashed in on a number of stars. Romeo Lavia, Tino Livramento, James Ward-Prowse, Nathan Teller and Mohamed Salizou. Even at a conservative estimate, that fire sale could generate 130 million of profits just in terms of transfer fees received. Without even considering the relief to the wage bill from those departures, that would allow Southampton to lose another 22.5 million and still reach that lost threshold. So financially at least, the Saints look secure for now. Now let's see if cash matches the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're scrutinizing the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, sees generally healthy inflows until COVID. But since 2021, cash has left St. Mary's consistently. But over the 10 years, Southampton has brought in 63 million. Now back to transfers. We in fact see cash again leaving St. Mary's more years than not. 2023 saw 47 million leave the club. And over the decade, net transfer cash of 135 million has been spent. So if you add those together, we see a tale of two halves. Cash coming in all years but one until 2019, then flipping to outflows from 2020. Over this 10-year spell, the Saints have spent 72 million. So how much funding has been needed? After initial inflows, funding remained flat and even lowered until 2019. However, COVID and declining cash flows saw two big injections in 2020 and 2023, meaning that a total of 136 million has been funded over the last 10 years. However, it should be pointed out that Southampton's net debt at June 2023 was 80 million. This was predominantly bank loans rather than directly from the owner. So with Russell Martin now at the helm, will Southampton secure their way back to the Premier League? Only time will tell.